Hi, I'm Becky Peters, Director of Services for Students with Disabilities. The video you are about to see is an example of how faculty and students with disabilities can work together to arrange for testing accommodations. We hope that the information in the video will be helpful to faculty and students who are new to alternative testing procedures at UW Platteville. Hi, my name is Lee, a student at UW Platteville. Come join me while I talk to a professor about testing accommodations. Prior to my meeting with my professor, I have already arranged the following steps. First, show services for students with disabilities, your disability documentation. Then you should meet with an accommodation specialist who has reviewed the documentation and other relevant information. Next, you should receive a verified individualized service and accommodations form also known as a visa. A written record of your accommodations recommended by a accommodation specialist. And finally, you should contact your professor to request an appointment to discuss your accommodations. This video shows the next three steps. Asking for accommodations from your faculty, setting up the accommodations the faculty provide, and arranging accommodations in the Center for Alternative Testing. The first thing I do is provide my professor with a copy of my visa to verify my accommodations that have been recommended by Services for Students with Disability. I will also bring along a copy of my class schedule. Secondly, I will explain the exact accommodations I need for an exam in my class. And third, I will describe how the accommodations help me with the exam. You will notice I do not share what my exact disability is with my professor. Whether you choose to do so is your choice, but you are definitely not required to do so. Hi, Professor Tischer. My name is Lee. Hi Lee, nice to meet you. I was just, I'm in your 140 sociology class and I want to come in and talk to you about the com some accommodations in your classroom. I just want to get this out of the way early, that's why I wanted to meet with you so quickly. Thank you for coming early Lee, that's so refreshing. Usually I have students that ask for accommodations and they come at the last minute and that makes it difficult for me to accommodate them and I know that's frustrating for them and it's also a little bit frustrating for me. So I'm really glad that you're on top of this. Well, well this is my visa and you can see my accommodations that I worked out with services for students with disability. Um, I just need a, a computer for essay questions, for essay tests, and then also just extra time and a half. Okay, okay that's, that's great. So really your accommodations are more for a test in the class? Yes. Okay. And that time and a, and that time and a half, um, and sometimes, it, sometimes students in the class won't finish either, which is okay too. And I use both those in high school the computer and the extra time and I thought was very helpful in those classes so okay. Okay. I thought I'd try them here. So in particularly you've had some difficulty with taking tests and finishing mm -hmm. exams in a timely manner. Yeah. And your visa explains the accommodations yeah. that you'll need. It just makes you more relaxed to take those, take that little extra time to go over your tests a little more. Yep. Okay. In addition to the extra time, is there anything about the exam format that's been difficult for you? Uh, like I said, just the essay question, just the essay questions and then the computer helps out too, and that's just the computer just for the essay questions. Okay, Lee, I don't have any questions or concerns about the accommodations that you are requesting, and I know that services for students with disability require students to provide current documentation of their disability to be approved for these accommodations. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like the meeting with my professor is going quite well. Here are some tips that you could follow to ensure a, a successful meeting. It is best to notify faculty early that you need accommodations. A sample email students can send to faculty to request this meeting is available on the Services for Students with Disabilities website. Bring your visa to verify your accommodations. Faculty are often eager to assist students, but some may be unfamiliar with methods or resources you may need. Share how your disability affects test taking and discuss exam formats and how they help you. Bring your course syllabus and a copy of your class schedules. You'll see how these are helpful in the next section of the video. If you need help or ideas on how to approach faculty, contact your accommodation specialist. The following suggestions may be helpful to faculty when they meet with students to discuss alternative testing. Review the student's visa to verify recommended accommodations. Reach an agreement on the appropriate test accommodations for each exam. 
Provide reasonable accommodations that don't fundamentally alter the nature of the course. If you have questions or concerns about an accommodation request, talk with a student, the accommodation specialist listed on the student's visa, or your department's disability liaison who can be found on the Services for Students with Disabilities website. Also available is a frequently asked question document that can be downloaded from Services for Students with Disabilities website or picked up at the office. In the next section of the video, Lee and I will work together to figure out the details of how each exam will be accommodated. Notice the arrangements for each exam are different. Differences can be due to several factors. Remember that Lee is approved for time and a half and a computer for essay exams only. Lee finds he won't need to request a computer for two of his three exams because they are multiple choice format, not essay. The accommodations needed often have an impact on where the exam will take place. For example, Lee needs to take his final exam in a private location since he'll need a computer for the essay questions. Using a computer in the class would single him out and could distract other students taking the exam. The student and the professor's schedule may also affect where and when you take the exam. For example, I will not be able to proctor one of Lee's exams because of a schedule conflict, so I'll suggest to Lee that the exam be administered at the Center for Alternative Testing. Pay close attention to see how each of Lee's three exams in the Sociology 140 class is handled. So basically, let's see Lee, I've got three exams in my class. The first and second exam are entirely multiple choice. Okay, so I don't think that you're going to need a computer for that. However, the third exam is half multiple choice and half essay. So you may need a computer for that. So just the two testing, just the two exams in your classroom then? Well, it's always been the university's preference to keep the exams within the regular class. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at your schedule. Well, this is my schedule. And as you can see on my Monday schedule, I have one at 10, then yours, and then one right after yours. So if I could, to use that extra time and a half, if I could take it right before um, my class start or maybe right after my 12 o'clock class. Sounds like it would be a good idea maybe to take it right after your 12 o'clock class for that first test. Mm -hmm. And then the last two exams will be on Friday. And it looks like you don't have class at that time, so you can stay after and finish so that you get that time and a half. And there aren't any other classes in that room afterwards. Or another option for you, Lee, was, would be to come back and finish the exam in the conference room that I can reserve within the department. Um, what do you think? Do you have a preference? I think the conference room would be uh, most beneficial because right after the test, a lot of students are asking you questions and you're always kind of busy. So if I could just hand me hand in my test to you and then head up to the conference room and wait for you there, would be best. And Lee, the conference room, it's a quiet room and so that shouldn't be much of a problem. And if you'd like to, you can go look at the room beforehand. It's in room 205 in the building. Excellent. I think it'll be fine. So I'll just hand my test in with the rest of the class, and then I'll meet you up in the conference room to finish it. That sounds great. Okay. So I think we've got a plan for that second test, but I'm not sure what we need to do with the final yet, um, because you'll need a computer for that. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be very discreet for you to have a computer in the classroom taking the test. It might be a good idea for you to take that final exam in the Center for Alternative Testing. Okay. Two of Lee's exams will be proctored in the department. The first exam, I will proctor the whole exam after class, either in my office or conference room, due to scheduling conflicts with other classes. For the second exam, he needs only extra time, so he'll start the exam with the class and then move to another location to finish the exam. For the final, he needs more than just extended time. He'll be also using a computer for the essay part of the exam and will be taking the test in the Center for Alternative Testing. When accommodations can't be provided in the classroom without compromising the student's right to confidentiality or without distracting other students, then it's best to have the exam proctored in another location within your department. In the last part of the video, we'll examine what happens when the professor can't arrange for the student to take the exam in the department and must make arrangements to take it at the Center for Alternative Testing, also known as the CAT. The CAT should be used only for those exams that faculty or departments aren't unable to proctor themselves. Students and faculty should be familiar with the CAT's policies and procedures, including deadlines for submitting and approving requests. Have you taken a test at the CAT before, Lee? Yes, I go over the CAT and I register and set the time and the dates for the test. 
and then you and I fill out this alternative testing form, fill out together, and then we set the test on when we best take it. So how do I get the exam to them? Well, there are several ways. You could do it through Campus Mail, which takes three to four days. There's, you can take it over yourself and to the CAT office. You could also put an envelope and seal it up, and I can deliver it to the CAT office, or you can do it electronically. Okay, so there sounds like there's a few different options that I have. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in what that electronic drop box would be. Well, if you go to the CAT website, there's some information for faculty to follow, which make it easy for you to, to send over. Okay, so that sounds like a really good idea. I think that will be the easiest for me to, to do. Mm -hmm. um, so then what happens once the exam is over? Well, once the exam is over, depending on how you, the, you put on the testing form, they can, they'll find, send it back over to you in that format. Well, that, well, that sounds pretty easy. Mm -hmm. And also there's a spot on the form, too, where you can see how long it takes on the test. Okay, so it sounds like everything would be pretty simple if I just fill out the alternative testing form and get it to the CAT. Yes. Great. I think I have everything I need to get this underway. And Lee, it would, if, it, if you wouldn't mind, it would be helpful if you could remind me a few days in advance of each test so that we make sure that we have everything all set for you. Definitely. I, I agree this is a good plan that you've, we've got set up, and feel free in the meantime to come back and ask me any questions that you have. Thank you. So my professor and I have scheduled an exam through Center for Alternative Testing. Here are some tips when taking exams. We suggest talking to, to your professors within the first week of each semester to allow them to better plan for your test and accommodations needs. If it is requ required that students remind or notify faculty of testing accommodations at least three days before each exam, request only those accommodations that you need for a particular exam. Room, proctors, and equipment are scheduled based on your accommodations you request. Arrive at CAT promptly to take the exam. If you arrive late, you will lose that time. If an instructor wants to modify any accommodations, speak with the instructor to resolve any differences prior to taking the test. Once you have taken the exam, you will not be able to retake the exam with different accommodations. The following suggestions are intended for faculty who refer their students to the CAT for testing. Maintain the student's confidentiality throughout the alternative testing process. Avoid singling the student out from the rest of the class. Confirm the details of the test arrangements with the student and with the CAT. Respond to each exam request within the CAT's deadline. Be aware that students are required to remind faculty of their accommodation needs at least three days prior to each exam date. Follow procedures and meet deadlines for exam pickup and delivery. Review the CAT's website for more detailed information and for recent updates on their procedures. Uphold the integrity of the exam process. A student may be subject to procedures for academic misconduct outlined in the student disciplinary guidelines. If you miss the deadline for submitting an exam request to the CAT, the student and the faculty member would both need to contact the CAT to see if there is still time available to take the exam. If a student misses a deadline or does not give the faculty at least three days notice before each test, you may have to take the exam during the class without accommodations. For additional information regarding services for students with disabilities, please visit our website or call us at 608-342-1818. The staff at Services for Students with Disabilities would like to thank Dr. Kimberly Tischer of the School of Education Counselor Education Program, Lee Knoble Janney, the Graduate Assistant at the Center for Alternative Testing, Russell Hill and the staff at UWP Television Services, and Dan Frommelt at the UWP Web Development Services for their time and commitment to educating students with disabilities and faculty about alternative testing procedures at the UW-Platteville campus.